I'm Sandy from Lab41.com. Today, GameTech Live, a brilliant team programmer and the administrator of the Chameleon Ultra GUI GitHub, is joining me and we'll talk about the new Chameleons, of course, and the Chameleon Ultra GUI. Well, I'm Benedict, also known as GameTech Live Online. I'm from Austria and code in my free time. How old are you, actually? If you don't mind me asking. 15? Yep. Damn. So, when did you start to code? Somewhere a, a bit after I got my first laptop. I'd say with something like 11, 12 or something. Okay. I started looking into it. And yeah, and it's just evolved from there. Like, how come you started to code for our RI3D project like the Chameleon Ultra? Well, I started the project for the Chameleon Ultra basically because it, I had a Proxmark 3 and I saw that the Chameleon came out and I thought that probably lots of people don't want to use a CLI like the Proxmark. And okay. so I asked, is someone interested in a GUI? Some said yes. And I just like looked into it. I wanted it to be cross-platform so, so that it runs everywhere. My first idea was to basically just use JavaScript and build in a web browser. Um, after looking at a web serial API, um, I scrapped that idea because one, I don't like JavaScript, two, it's not supported on mobile, and three, it's a pain in general. Mm -hmm. Then I tried to just use Python, which I like, and do development on mobile. There is a Python framework, but it just didn't work. And at the end, someone suggested to use Flutter, and that's what we are still using. How is the project going, actually, right now? Um, currently, it's going pretty well. We got lots of stars on GitHub, um, and lots of people are using it. 130 plus stars. It's pretty good growth. and. Some people even donate, so we got $150 already. We're mostly using that to publish on the App Store because Apple charges $99 yeah, yeah, yeah. a year, which is stupid in my opinion, but someone will defend it. <laughs> I won't be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, it's going fine. We've got, a, we've got a lot of people interested that use it. We've got people who report bugs and some even do translations and contribute their own code. I'm currently, currently missing is a write card page, but I'm already working on that because the Chameleon Ultra supports also writing cards. Yes. It's also part of the second chip that's on the Ultra, but missing from the light. And I need to improve the MF key 32 collection because currently it just spits out the keys to the screen. Should be added to a dictionary and stuff. So yeah, mm -hmm. just making that a bit more user friendly. Yeah. Other than that, we'll see what the firmware guys come up with and just implement whatever is in firmware. <laughs> I got no. pretty lucky because the, one of the persons I'm working on with this, that's working with me within this app, it has had one of those wave share development boards, mm -hmm. which are basically the same processor and just laid out differently. So we could at least try some parts and develop a bit for it. So right now you consider the app to be uh, to be in beta, in beta yeah. or yeah, somewhere beta, alpha, somewhere in between, mm -hmm. because. We are also missing a lot of error handling. So if something goes wrong, either the entire app crashes or something wrong gets sent, which of, of course shouldn't happen. It should just pop up error, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and yeah, obviously translations, but that's work being worked on. The, what other projects do you are working on? Currently not much because the GUI is basically consuming all of the time I have for projects but I don't care, it's a fun project. But other than that, I had some scripts on the... I had a script on my GitHub that got reasonably popular that's, that's automatically setting up an Ethereum validator. That was like in, in the crypto time, in the COVID time and stuff. I had a friend who I have a friend who's like really into crypto, so I made this script to make not only his life easier but also others. 
it got reasonably popular, but I don't currently the graph for crypto is like yeah, <laughs> crypto down, is down, so no one's interested. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's one of the projects. Also, there's like a lot of smaller stuff that just like okay, let me help this guy out and just publish it because why not? And I got a Discord bot, which I should probably work on, but yeah, currently can't really do much. <laughs> so you go back to school in uh, in uh, September, I guess. So I'm, I'm sure your teachers are, are pretty. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty happy to have some more lucky. Yeah. Some of them would have said I could have skipped first class. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it appears to be the case, yeah. Well, are, are there any security concerns uh, about the, 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 the Camion Ultra GUI uh, for now? Uh, I, I saw... no, because, <laughs> because it's fully open source and we don't send anything to anywhere. Mm -hmm. The only thing we do contact is obviously GitHub to download the firmware but then we only pull from, we don't send anything, and also the Open Collective API to show the people that have donated in the About page. But then we also don't send anything, only pull. Okay. And on the device itself, there's Bluetooth, of course, which was open for a long time, so that could have been a security concern, but now there's a pairing pin. Mm -hmm. Um, there are lots of issue reports of people who didn't read the manual asking what the pin is. <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> user, user error, user error. Uh, yeah. So I think the plan is to make no Bluetooth, secure Bluetooth with the pin and open Bluetooth as an option in the settings, mm -hmm. like by, from the firmware developers. But yeah. Uh, it's always being updated. We've got CI/CD continuous integration, continuous deployment. That means that every time when the change gets pushed to the main branch, it gets automatically built, packaged, uploaded, and published. So you're always on the latest version. Okay. Only delays would be from either Google or Apple reviewing it. What is the most challenging part for the moment uh, with the with this project? I'm currently challenging not really much because we've got all of the hard stuff already figured out. Mm -hmm. um, someone wanted to port it to the web, so Flutter can also compile for web. Someone wanted to port it to the web. That's, of course, its own set of challenges because web is a lot more restricted than running natively. Mm -hmm. And yeah, th this person said he seems to have given up for now. So that's not gonna happen soon. <laughs> but yeah, uh, on, almost all of the hard stuff currently is done. We've got one annoying error, which is in Dart itself. So the language used, used by Flutter, where you have an error that's being reported to the debugger that there exists an error, but there is no error. So it just pauses out of nowhere. Okay. It's just. An error in the language itself, it's already reported, but they're pretty slow to fix <laughs> stuff. It's just a minor annoyance. Do, do you plan to uh, monetize the app or the programs uh, later? No. No? No. So you're going to stay fully open source, and if the people keep donating, it's also going to stay on the app store. If not, we'll just have to pull it because the app. W when do you plan? the app to be completely finished like Probably, not to like like get, get out of like get out of beta and and really goes to to yeah like we have a 1.0 Mm, probably when we got Bluetooth a bit better, so it doesn't crash constantly. And even the app, and just like set the right page and the MF key improvements, mm. then it's pretty complete for the current state of firmware. Let's okay. say 1.0, I don't know if when that's gonna happen, because as I said, it's always continuous integration, continuous deployment. Mm. So you basically only got a build number at the end. And that's it. <laughs> the most stability problems are actually from Bluetooth, at least in our app, because the Bluetooth library sometimes crashes, both on the Chameleon side and on the device side. It's a bit unstable in general, so yeah, beyond our control, sadly. Are they working? Yeah. On, are they responsive on the on your feedback and? and... Yeah, they are pretty responsive on my feedback, but mostly I'm just 
make, saying like, this could work, maybe this could work, you could maybe do it like this, but I'm not a firmware developer. I don't really like embedded development. That's like not my cup of tea. So I'm ju I just leave it to them mostly. Uh, so you are pretty much the project manager? Yep. Imp pretty much. Yeah, pretty much impressive. Imp impressive, <laughs> impressive. Like, yeah, that's 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 pretty impressive. If you want to support the Camelon Ultra Agree project, I will put a link in the description below. And of course, if you need a Camelon Ultra or a Camelon Lite with the best service and the best price, visit lab4.com now. Thank you for watching this video. See you at the next one.